What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about the Rolls Royce and whether it is a buy at the current price. And no, I'm not talking about the car, I'm talking about the aerospace and defence company. Okay, so the standard format of my stock analysis videos has always been to run through my qualitative analysis first to allow you to understand the inputs and assumptions used in my quantitative analysis before finally at the end of the video revealing what I believe the company is worth. But I figured that not everybody wants to watch a 15 minute or so video before finding the intrinsic value of the company. And because I value absolutely any minute that you give to watching these videos, I figured that today we'll do it slightly differently. So today I'm going to give you what I believe that the company is worth and then we'll look at some of management's guidance as well as some potential developments for the stock. Now I know for a fact that the valuation that I've assigned to Rolls Voice is not going to be very well received and that's because I think that the company is overvalued and that goes against the general consensus that we see here on YouTube. And I think one of the main reasons why this stock is so popular is because a lot of people have seen just how much the share price has deteriorated in recent years and they are considering this as a turnaround play or a quick recovery but I don't think it actually makes much sense to consider Rolls-Royce in that way. Now, if we actually consider Rolls-Royce's business, they've got two divisions which make up 70% of their revenue. So they've got the civil aerospace, which makes up around 41% of their revenues, and then they've got the defence sector, which makes up 29% of their revenues. And if we just consider each of these in turn, we'll start to understand why the recovery might not be as quickly as we're expecting. So if we consider the civil aerospace first, this is where Rolls-Royce is selling jet engines primarily to commercial airliners. Now, they also provide servicing for those airliners as well, but a large proportion of that sector is the selling of jet engines. Now, you just have to think for a moment that every single airliner in the world has been hit significantly by COVID-19. So to say that they don't have much spare cash at the moment is an understatement, right? So even when business does fully normalise for them, which might not be for a few more years, the last thing that they're going to want to do is replace their jet engines. It doesn't make sense. They're going to try and delay that for as long as possible. And that delay, of course, means that Rolls-Royce are going to see a delay in their recovery as well. And management are very much aware of this, which is why they've undergone a huge restructuring program, getting rid of 7,000 jobs. Which then leads us on to the defence sector. Now, it's absolutely no secret whatsoever that the UK economy is not doing too well at the moment. And everybody knows that when an economy struggles, one of the first sectors within the budget to get cut is unfortunately defence, which means that Rolls-Royce are going to suffer from that as well. That being said, the UK government have just committed to an increase in defence spending for the next five years. So we'll see if they actually commit to that. And if they do, that will turn out to benefit Rolls-Royce quite nicely. But all of this is to say that despite the significant drop in their share price over the last few years, I still think that the company is significantly overvalued. In fact, I think that the stock is trading at 100% above its intrinsic value. Now stay with me because I know that that sounds crazy, but this is what the numbers are telling me. This is a stock that's trading at 92 pence a share, and I think that its intrinsic value is somewhere closer to 46 pence. But don't take my word for it, let's look at the numbers. Okay, so just before we dive into the inputs of the valuation model, I just want us to have a look at the historical performance of Rolls-Royce. Right, so revenue's been relatively flat for the last five years, with the exception of FY20, and that was obviously because of COVID-19. If we look to their earnings though, we can see that they only had one profitable year in the last five years. Now, I'll forgive them for FY20 because that was COVID-19 related, but even the other three years, they've all been negative. Now, you have to understand that Rolls-Royce is a mature business. They've been around for a very long time, and so you wouldn't expect them to be consistently loss-making year over year. This isn't a company that's growing really quickly, and therefore we're expecting that their revenues are going to grow and their earnings will grow with that. This is a company that has just been loss-making year after year, even before COVID-19 came into play. And then their free cash flow is actually generally not too bad. Um, of course, FY20 is the exception, but that can be expected. So not too bad on the free cash flow front, but their earnings are absolutely horrible. So we can just see here that revenues in FY19 were 16.5 billion, and then in FY20, they dropped by 30% to just under 12 billion. And management have already said that it's going to take pretty much until 2023 or the end of 2023 before they see sort of pre-COVID-19 levels. And that's what I've factored into in my discounted cash flow. So we can see here I've put one to three year revenue growth of 15% because that allows us to reach those pre-COVID levels, the sort of 2019 levels by the end of 2023. So that's in line with what management are sort of expecting at this point. And then I've gone for four to five year revenue growth of 6% and six to 10 year revenue growth of 4%. So if we just look at sort of before COVID-19 was around, they always averaged around 7%, 5%. I mean, 
it was a negative year there, but generally it's somewhere in the regions of four, five or 6%. So I've gone for 6% revenue growth in years four to five and 4% revenue growth in years six to 10. Now gross margins for Rolls-Royce are pretty horrible, to be honest. So if we look at the last five years, and even if we just forget about FY20 because of COVID-19, we can see that gross margins have been declining year over year. So that is never a good sign. And despite that decline, I've still decided to go with a fairly bullish assumption, which is gross margins of 13%. Now, considering that they haven't achieved gross margins of 13% since 2017, I think that is very bullish. And generally, I probably would have gone for something a little bit lower, but this is to emphasize the point that I think that this company is overvalued. Operating expenses at 15% of revenues, to be fair, that's been fairly consistent throughout the five years, so I'm pretty comfortable using 15%. Now for free cash flow as a percentage of revenue, I've gone for 4%, which I think is probably fair. So over the last five years, it was 1%, 2%, 4%, 5%, and then obviously in FY20, it was minus 35%, which I've just completely ignored. But it's around 4 or 5% probably, 2% was probably a bad year, and 1% it's not even worth thinking about. So I think 4% is probably a fair assumption, if not somewhere on the more bullish side of assumptions. Terminal growth I've gone with 1.5%, not much really to be said there. And weighted average cost of capital is 8.9% from the calculation above. I won't spend any time on that. And then for cash and cash equivalents, they've currently got three and a half billion pounds in cash. I realise here it says dollars, but it shouldn't, it should say pounds. And then similarly for debt, they've got seven and a half billion pounds worth of debt, which isn't good considering they've got a market capitalization of 7.7 .7 billion. So they've got as much debt as they do equity, which is never a good sign. So as you can see there, I've not used any crazy assumptions in my discounted cash flow model. I've gone with revenue growth largely in line with what management are expecting and who knows the business better than management. I've gone with gross margins probably on the higher side of things, certainly what we've seen in the last few years. Operating expenses have remained fairly consistent, so there's no reason for me to assume that they are going to decrease over time. And then I've used free cash flow as a percentage of revenue largely in line with what we've seen historically as well. And when we populate the results of those inputs over the next 10 years, we can see that in every single year they are making a loss. And that's probably not that surprising considering a load of those inputs are based on their historical performance where four of the last five years have seen them make a loss as well and bear in mind a much larger loss than what we've been seeing in our forecast going forward so i don't think that i've been overly prudent in my assumptions ultimately we can only play with the numbers that we are given now one thing just to point out here is that for 2021 i've manually input a free cash flow of negative two billion pounds the reason i've done that is because management have already come out and said that that's what they're expecting for 2021 and then for the remaining years i've put four percent as per our assumptions that then gives us an intrinsic value per share according to the discounted cash flow model of 46 pence now you'll notice here that there's no earnings multiple model and the reason for that is because we're not expecting them to be profitable i'm sure they will have profitable years and i'm not doubting that but unfortunately we don't have the level of information to understand when those years are going to be but ultimately history has proven that this is not a massively profitable business so not only is the intrinsic value potentially very low according to the discounted cash flow they also have negative shareholder equity. So their liabilities outweigh their assets. Basically, their balance sheet is absolutely horrible. And again, it's not like this is something that was caused purely by COVID-19. So we look back as far as 2016, and they had a debt to equity ratio of 178%. And it just continues to get worse and worse and worse. So they're really not doing very well at all. And because their balance sheet was so bad, it meant that when disaster did strike in the form of COVID-19, they were simply not prepared for it. So they had to raise new debt and issue new shares, diluting current shareholders. So we can see here that there was a 333% increase in the number of shares in the business, which is absolutely crazy. And those shares were issued at 32 pence a share. So clearly at that time, which was back in October 2020, management felt like 32 pence per share was a fair price for the business. And if we look at the share price of the stock over the last five years, now bearing in mind that this has already been adjusted for any share splits and rights issues, you can see just how bad the performance of the stock has actually been. Now, of course, past performance is not an indicator of future performance, but it just goes to show how out of favor this company is. And I'm sure there are gonna be lots of people that are saying that this stock is so cheap and that 46 pence per share is ridiculous. But I only have to take you back to October when it was trading at 40 pence a share. So I don't think 46 pence is so ridiculous, even if it does mean that the stock is currently trading 100% above its intrinsic value. Okay, but the whole point of this video is to give a fair and balanced view, and it wouldn't be right not to discuss some of the potential developments, because some of them do look quite good. 
and one of them is the urban air mobility industry. Now, this is just basically air taxis, and I think that that is actually the future. I think that within sort of 15 or 20 years, we will start to see this industry really take off. And Rolls-Royce are currently trying to position themselves in order to take advantage of that. So we can see here direct from the Rolls-Royce website, electric propulsion for a disruptive mobility concept. Imagine a flying taxi that can take you to your destination in minutes, not hours. A silent vehicle with no carbon emissions that can take off and land in the middle of a city. A new aircraft application that might move us sooner than you think. Now, I think that this is a great idea, and I know that there are various other companies that are working on this. Now, we all know that roads are becoming more and more congested, and there are two main reasons for that. The first one being that the global population is increasing, but the second one is that cars are cheaper than they were historically, and generally speaking, earnings have increased, so they are more affordable. And as a result of that, road congestion has increased. Now, one of the workarounds for that is to leave the roads and go to the skies. So it's a pretty cool concept, and Rolls-Royce are working with various different manufacturers in order to develop these aircraft. And we can see here that it reads, the potential of air taxis is generating an enormous amount of buzz. Numerous startups have pulled in double and even triple digit million dollars in venture capital funding, and the interest in convincing concepts remains high. Airbus believes the EV TOL market could one day outpace its existing $70 billion business. Now, I'm not too sure about that. I think that that is looking out very, very far into the future, at least based on the sort of research that I've done into this. And one of the articles that I'm referring to is this. So according to this article, the market for air taxis is to grow to $15 billion by 2041. So obviously that's quite a way away. That's 20 years in the future. And also $15 billion for the entire market is actually not that significant. Now, bearing in mind that this is referring to the total revenue earned by air taxis themselves and not the selling of air taxis, which would be considerably less, I don't think that this is something to really consider too much in your sort of valuation for Rolls Royce. Now, another industry that Rolls Royce are looking to benefit from is the space exploration industry, specifically referring to nuclear power. So we can see here that Rolls Royce has signed an innovative contract with the UK Space Agency for a study into future nuclear power options for space exploration. This first contract between both organisations represents an exciting opportunity to define and shape the nuclear power solutions required in space in the decades to come. Now, again, that this is something where they're looking many, many years into the future, decades, in fact. And so I don't think that it would be right to try and include anything relating to this in your valuation. It just doesn't really seem right to me, considering just how early stages this is. So there you have it. I don't think that Rolls Royce is a buy. I think that there are plenty of better opportunities out there. And I actually think that I wouldn't be surprised if I saw Rolls Royce's share price drop to 70 pence before the end of the year. But that's just my personal prediction and what the hell do I know? I know you guys, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the company. Are you invested in it or are you considering an investment? And if so, why? Um, but until next time, guys, thank you.